Hello and welcome to the on-farm pig kill video. Blake's getting set up behind me here. We have four pigs to do for a guy today. I think you can see him eager to meet Blake at the gate there. Blake's gonna kind of show us, like he did in the beef video, tips and tricks on how to ethically and cleanly process a pig on the farm. We'll get Blake's commentary as we go. So thanks for clicking on. And uh, it's a pretty good chance YouTube isn't gonna monetize this video because it's got some gore in it. It's the inevitable part of meat consumption. YouTube doesn't like it, so give it a thumbs up and maybe watch another video. Let's get started. <laughs> Here's the ham and bacon awaiting Blake. They're nice and calm and relaxed. Blake is prepping his rig here. He did a couple beef and a couple pigs earlier. It's later in the afternoon. It's, what was it, minus 18 right now? 17. Minus 17. No rest for the butchers in Canada. So, Blake's got some hot water here. A hoist he's hooked up, and... This is Blake, by the way. Right? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want me to... Oh, it's just... You know, you can set this up at home. There's nothing, you don't need anything fancy. Like in our beef video, he had that beautiful rig, but you just need a gam and a hook and some knives to do pigs, basically, right? That's right. Yeah, totally. We could basically do the same thing off a front end loader if you didn't have a hoist like this. Uh, when I first got this, it had a little hand winch on it and not the most sophisticated, but simple and pretty accessible for any home butcher, I would say. Uh, the hot water, of course, is important to keep hands and knives clean, and the hot melts the fat away. Um, what else? That's about it. I, I put a drop cloth in instead of a uh, tarp to line the box because uh, it's breathable, so especially when it's warmer, the carcass can breathe, start chilling as soon as it's in there, and it's launderable. Uh, tarps keep the heat in, and they're... I, <laughs> impossible to clean and sanitize well. This I can bleach and keep everything clean, so. Perfect, they're also gonna ask, what are you shooting these pigs with here, Blake? I, I shoot pigs with a 22 Magnum uh, with full metal jacket, and it's a very effective pig gun. All right, yet another botched bit of audio by yours truly. Uh, the pigs kinda scooted away after Blake uh, opened up the gate there, and there's one I can't, unfortunately can't, see it behind that plank but Blake's just lining up uh, plugs it in the head now he's going to get in the pen and bleed it right away you can see one shot there pigs stunned down um, those little death rows is because there's still oxygenated blood in its carcass and uh, moving around you can see that other pig is checking out his buddy they really don't seem to be affected too much by it Blake will come by here in a second and bleed it and it won't scare the other pigs. Uh, in fact, we tried to record this video in the summer uh, and I botched that audio too, funnily enough. Well, the microphone broke to be fair to me, but the other pigs were licking up the pool of blood by the time we finished cutting out the pigs. But Blake's showing you right there, that's the breastbone. You want to pull that leg up and away so you got access to it. You kind of go in just on the throat side of the breastbone, he's explaining here and you spin your knife around and push in towards the body cavity. You push towards the spine. That severs the aorta and the pig loses all its oxygenated blood at that point and that's when the animal is technically rendered dead. When there's no more oxygenated blood going to the brain, it can no longer feel anything and has left this world permanently. Ready to be turned into food. We're grateful for our food and uh, it's part of the process and Blake does it very well. All right, now they're going for the pig retrieval and uh, what they got is a calf sled. You'll see that little blue thing there. If you roll them in there, they're a lot easier to haul around. Okay. That's how you easily move a dead pig. <laughs> well. All right, Blake's got that guy pulled out here right in front of the crane ready to work on and he'll get her hoisted up and start the skinning process. Well, I'm going to run and put some more wood on the stove. Very good. We ducked out there just to go down and see what the hell happened down here. Somebody did some brushing last year. Okay. It, yeah. looks, it looks strange from here. Okay. So we're talk. <laughs> sure, no sweat. All right, so Blake's starting the hide opening process here. 
as you can see, kind of starts up on the hawk and opens down either side of the hawk as he goes. Breaking through the hide here is not a big deal because you're going to knock it off the foot anyways. And that wind has some bite. Holy smokes, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, cool. You want a no, no, I'm good. Got Just so the American people down watching this in Florida, I don't think they'll quite relate, but no. it's... <laughs> well, what we got to do up here. The good thing is, is there's no flies today. That's right, we don't got to worry about the meat spoiling. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And the spots where you open up the hide for the first time, that's kind of where it's going to be dirtiest, I guess. And Blake knows that joint right there. It's kind of just, there's a bulge in the in the back leg and there's a tendon you can see that sits right on top. It's right behind it. And he, pro like Blake finds it easily, but <laughs> it might take you a little more time if they're doing this at your home for your first time. And So he opens them back legs up just enough to get his gambrel in or hooks, whatever you're using. And... He's gonna lift it up and start using gravity to help pull that hide down. It's also nice to have a hoist like this so you can lift the animal up and that last little bit of blood comes out. Because again, if you end up with blood clots in your muscles, if they're laying on their side for too long, the blood will start to coagulate. And it has to be like a, quite a while before it starts coagulating but uh, then it'll start to give some of your chops and irony taste so make sure you get animal bled good so I'm gonna split the breastbone here and you don't need a saw for it on a pretty much any age pig there's a cartilage just off center that's easy to go through with the knife the landmark is an inch under the bottom teat <laughs> and then you can just basically go right down through all those ribs. Oops. You can see that there. The bottom rib can be the bottom rib can be quite tricky to get. It's yeah, it's often easier to get it coming up from the bottom. As you can tell. There. Now we're all the way free and clear. And that's going to help you when you get to the gutting step. That's You're not exactly going to. right. Then everything's just going to roll right out. I mean, I feel like the number one criticism you're going to get is why on earth are you skinning these pigs? Shouldn't you scald them and scrape the hair off? And. There's a few considerations there. One is, as a mobile butcher, the setup time to have enough hot water ready is so long. I will do it occasionally. I have a big burner and a drum, but I get to the farm about two hours before the first pig is dead. Um, and so it's hard to offer good value. That way I have to charge so much. And then the second consideration is Canada anyway. I'm assuming most of North America doesn't even really care for the rind on the cuts, maybe the hams, but the feedback I get from Duncan when I bring a pig to the shop is if it still had the skin on, he would have to skin it. It creates more work for him. And for the farmer, it offers more value too. He pays the butcher by the pound for the cutting and wrapping and so if the skin's gone which he's not eating anyway as well as the head and feet uh, I guess the farmer gets it's more economical that way does that make sense yes definitely there's like when I cut and wrap them I weigh them before we cut them and if that hides on there it's gonna add an extra you know five to ten pounds per side so that's an extra five to ten bucks Blake saves the farmer and their customers per side so yeah. so I've just carefully opened around the hips here Skinning pigs is 
it's tricky. Their, their skin is very soft and very thin. And so you can cut yourself some slack if you're filling it with holes. But if you learn to skin a pig, you can skin just about anything. Um, the only consideration is arguably the high, highest value cut of meat on the pig is the bacon, which yeah. is the bellies. Yeah. And so if you have a total hack job skinning the bellies, it can really impact the quality of the bacon. And so that's sort of the art of skinning pigs is nice, long, smooth strokes over the belly. Oh. Just so they have a nice, smooth bacon. Oops. Never skinned a pig. Is that right? Nope. We always used to do them by own. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, you can see it's pretty broad, flat strokes across that whole belly there. Yeah, and kind of as you're going, you're I noticed with your left hand, you're kind of, or whatever, now it's going to be your right hand. You're kind of pulling up and away from the carcass That's and that right, knife is yeah. kind of pressed up into the skin so you're not gorging the meat is what it looks like and i just noticed too blake is using his foot to brace that carcass so that as he pulls it's not twisting on him so there's a little trick for you yeah this thing spins i'm also i've switched hands here that's maybe one downfall of skinning a pig hanging, is it can be awkward to skin the other side. Uh, and so in my view, you kind of need to learn to skin with both hands. It sure helps anyway. skin and then I'll break the tail whoops maybe find a find the vertebrae there and it should just break nice and easy got my little hook somewhere here so this is the bunging operation Blake's got a little hook there keep his fingers out of the butthole and uh, you kind of work around it the edge and there's a couple spots that kind of muscles that connect it and then you can kind of tube it and it goes away and I just I just uh, cut this cod fat out of here that's where the udder would be for <laughs> udder would be if it was a female in this case and then the penis would be in there on a barrel or a bore Now, a pig's H-bone is quite soft. There's a joint right there. It should just pop right open. I kind of put it in and did the old uh, VLT pull. <laughs> and so if you're struggling with that, you're probably not in the right spot. So now I've already broken the breastbone, so I just have this bit of tissue holding everything in. I go handle first. Just push down all the way. Sometimes in the, depends if the animal hasn't taken a dump that day, this can be pretty loaded and so I pull it right out. So if there's any manure or anything, it's gonna fall on the ground as opposed to the carcass. That's a kidney. There we go, and there's kind of a good handle between the liver and the stomach. You could carry this wherever. I'm gonna save the liver today. And it, it, the gallbladder is still attached, so I'll take that off. Is this for dog food, Blake? Yeah, unless the farmer wants it, then yeah, I'll take it back to the shop for dog food. 
So one kidney. One kidney pulled out with the organs there. The other one's still in there, so you can fish that out. And then you can see the diaphragm here, as well as all the kidney fat, the leaf fat. So the diaphragm, I just cut at the edge of the muscle, right around. I leave this hanger muscle in. That'll go into trim. And basically I just go up to the top of it and cut it off the backbone and leave it attached. And then this is the aorta here. You can actually just kind of work your fingers in and pull it off. Same with this connective tissue around the heart. So now I have the heart and lungs. And I just work down both sides of the throat. And you can, if you do it right, pull the tongue out too. That's called the pluck. And I'll take that whole thing back for dog food as well. Nice. Slick. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? Uh, also, those organs there, we kind of breezed through them because they looked, this is a nice healthy pig, but if you were to see indications of stress or whatever that might make you suspect of the animal they're going to show up in those organs and spots and pus pockets and stuff like that correct yeah the most common thing i'd see is spots in the liver especially outdoor pigs raised year over year over year in the same pen they they're usually carrying a reasonably high parasite load and those livers are junk but these ones look good look very i mean um what i'm going to do next is pull this kidney fat it's way easier to do it while it's warm and it's way easier to do it before the carcass is split. So once it's got gutted, you just kind of work your hand in down by the diaphragm and you pull it up almost all the way and you can leave it hang there. The guys at the cutting table appreciate that very much. That's <laughs> yeah. a real SOB to pull off when it's cold. And you can speak more to this, but that my understanding is that's not really well suited for sausage making, that fat. It's better for rendering for lard. Correct. Makes beautiful fried chicken and french fries. And baking. All right, so where's the landmark for that? <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a knuckle here and a knuckle here, and it's basically in between. Uh, um, and then I'm applying outward pressure, and there's kind of a flat part of the joint there that while I'm putting that pressure on, that knife, it should just break like that. Um, <laughs> practice i don't know yeah. yeah stab away till you find it if yeah. you're having a tough time lots of guys too like blake kills quite a bit of our uh just about all of our pigs on farm but some guys kill their own and uh, you can just use a saw if you have a real That's tough right. time with it totally i don't know if you guys noticed there is a quick little move by blake but after he opened up that hawk there he uh, brushed his knife off on the inside of the hide and that's a good way to kind of get rid of the dirt and stuff off the edge of your blade yeah you usually pick up a few hairs opening the hide and so that's why i'm wiping it there and on the pig i want to skin out the side of the head to save the jowls which is what i'm doing here they can be cured to make guanciala or face bacon and just a little more yield to the farmer. Um, if the, we were scalding the animal and keeping the head whole, I would, I would, those would come off with the head, but because we're not, I'll leave those attached to the carcass. So yeah, basically I'm cutting from the clean side of the hide out here. And just kind of a habit, but I didn't pick anything up there. But if you're going to get a hair, that's where it's going to be. And I just give it a quick wipe both sides. Uh, 
Those big long guitar strokes are key. Yeah, and again, I've practiced enough to do it with both hands. It really makes a big difference keeping these front hawks clean. So now I'm just going to finish skinning the sides so that I can remove the hide. And if done properly, pigs that have a tail, they have a natural handle. These pigs don't have tails, so should just pull down along the backbone, over the shoulder. Oops. And then I just skin the back of the head. So I skinned the jowls. Now I'm going to come in. Here's the back of the jawbone right here. Find it with your knife and you can roll down the side of the cheek and keep the jowl attached to the carcass. And then same thing on the other side. And then just kind of connect the dots and loosen up all the connective tissue around the atlas joint. And I grab the hawk with one hand and the head with the other. And that just twists and breaks the joint. And there we go. Now all that's left is just to split. Okay, well, I'm going to split with a Jarvis 404. <laughs> 404. It's a, a yeah, pretty standard butcher saw. It's nice because it has this stiff guard, makes for a pretty straight split. But you can order stainless steel blades on Amazon for your Sawzall, and it'll work just fine for splitting a pig as well. Blake's going from the inside, you can just see the spine a little better there. Oh, it's got a little gen running it, but it's so dang cold out today, the generator is not loving this weather. There we go, that's a dang good split. And that's kind of essentially where Blake's work kind of ends. Bring it back to the shop and we'll rinse off a little bit of that bone dust and whatnot, but you can see a little spinal cord on both sides, so gets two thumbs up from us, makes the pork chops a little easier to cut and stuff. If you do end up off the midline, that's where all your high value cuts are, the tenderloin, the pork loin, the, uh, the pork shoulder, AKA butt and stuff. So it's important to do your best on that split. Blake did real well. And Blake has the next critter pulled up there, ready to work on. So we're going to let Blake work uninterrupted and uh, just kind of get a shot of the process if he wasn't having to explain to us what he was doing as he was doing it. So enjoy everybody.
for watching everybody. Hopefully you managed to get some value out of this video or you found it interesting. If you did, maybe stick around, watch another video off the channel, because like I said before, this won't be monetized by YouTube. It doesn't like the blood and guts, I guess. So, stick around, watch another video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it, guys. Take care.